driving a Model T is very much unlike a modern car. You, it's nearly impossible to operate a cellular device and drive a machine like a Model T. You have three pedals on the floor and none of them are the gas pedal. My name is Seamus Nat. I'm from Toledo, Ohio, and I'm a senior in the restoration program at McPherson College. A friend of mine in uh, Toledo, Ohio, uh, Sally's passed away, named Got John Gottschalk. He had a 1915 Touring, and he said, you should go look at uh, this 1914 that's for sale. And I'm like, John, I can't afford a 1914 Touring car. I, those are brass era cars. No one, someone's going to college, can't afford it. And he's like, I've talked to them. Just, just go, go take a look at it. So I went and looked at it, and original upholstery, top's been replaced, paint, second paint job. I'm the fourth owner. It was built on March 28th, 1914, at the Highland Park plant in Michigan. The engine needed rebuilt. Uh, and after I had probably put about 500 miles on it, the center main bearing had three hairline cracks in it. Uh, so Joe Bell had rebuilt my engine and transmission for me. I had, uh, I've rebuilt the front axle, uh, rebuilt the steering uh, assembly. Uh, some students rebuilt the rear axle in their drivetrain class. I've hand stitched the upholstery together on the seats as it's falling apart. Uh, polished the brass, keep up with all the regular maintenance, oiling all the time, filling grease cups. Just fix or repair daily as a Ford would be. I've always, I was always fidgeting with things when my dad bought them or we'd have an old computer so I would take the old computer apart or I remember my dad bought a Dremel once and so I took the Dremel apart and it did not go back together and it did not work but he ended up returning another one so. When I was in sixth grade uh, a friend of mine, Stephen Miner, he lived down the street when we were living in Cincinnati. He had a unicycle, and I thought it was really cool that he was riding it, so he let me borrow it. It took me about three months to learn how to ride the unicycle. And then we moved to Toledo, finally bought my own unicycle. And then when I uh, became a freshman here, I saw a six foot tall unicycle on eBay for $90. So I ended up buying it. And it didn't take that long to figure out how to ride it. I fell down a couple of times, but then the third time, I ended up going around campus about twice. Unicycles tend to hurt if you ride them over an extended period of time, so it's just best to keep with short trips. <laughs> a lot of the automakers came from uh, bicycle shops, and so a lot of the aspects that you see in bicycles, uh, you see in the early 1900s cars, and uh, that engineering aspects uh, flowed over into the automobile and they're just really simple to work on. The brass era stands out profoundly amongst the other eras of cars, I think, because of their um, personality. They create a sense of wow with you when you're driving. You can just never have so much fun going so slow.